To make predictions about the natural world, scientists need information. And the two big problems they face are that one, they are physically human, so they're about this big, and they live about this long, and most things in the natural world are either too fast, too slow, too big, or too small for them to see. And two, like all humans, scientists have brains, and human brains are inherently biased. Most of science involves getting around these two problems, and this is no more apparent than for the scientists aboard a large scientific vessel called the Noor. Their job is to investigate infections of a tiny phytoplankton called Melania huxleyi, or EHUX, by an even tinier virus in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Compared to a ship like the Noor, the Atlantic Ocean is huge. If the Atlantic Ocean was the size of a football field, the length of the Noor would be the width of a credit card. And compared to a scientist on board the Noor, EHUX, the single-celled phytoplankton, is really tiny. You could fit 300 EHUX in the width of a penny. These scientists want to find out what's happening with these organisms that are too small to see in this ocean that is so big it would take many lifetimes to inspect every inch. Also, keep in mind, the scientists aboard the Noor have other constraints to think about. A, they only have two months at sea and they need to eat and sleep, so time is limited. And B, everything is moving around because they're on a ship in the middle of the ocean. And this makes looking at really tiny microscopic things difficult. To inspect the ocean accurately and efficiently when you don't have the time or the right environment requires some common science tools. These tools allow scientists to get an idea of what's going on when they can't see exactly what's going on. It's impossible to inspect every cubic inch of the ocean. It's even impossible to inspect every cubic inch of the ocean where there is an actual infection happening. But you can inspect little representative bits of the ocean. These are called samples. Sampling is a way of getting the overall picture of something when you can only see pieces of that picture. It's essentially measuring the important parts and then extrapolating the rest. We may not be able to see individual EHUX very easily, but since an EHUX bloom has so many cells, these blooms can be seen collectively from space. Satellite imagery was used to find EHUX blooms on a large scale, and then scientists started taking samples within that bloom to investigate the processes on a smaller scale. To make sure your samples are actually representative bits, you have to know how to sample correctly. You can't take two samples and call it a day. You need to know how many samples it takes to be representative of the whole. That's sample size. Then you can't just take a bunch of samples in the same place. Your samples have to account for variations in the population. The NA Vice scientists not only got samples from different latitudes and longitudes, but also from various depths to see how EHUX populations and its infecting viruses interact at different depths. They took samples over a period of four days to see how an infection progresses over time and how the carbon and sulfur cycles are affected. That's why a lot of time on board is spent putting this thing called the CTD into the water. It not only collects water samples at precise depths in the water column, but it also has tons of sensors on it to collect data samples about light, salinity, temperature, turbidity, etc. at various depths. You can go out on a boat like now, take sample of water, filter it, collect the biomass, and do all the analysis uh, with an analytical chemistry or uh, other methods to look for these molecules. And if we see them, we can learn more about uh, the, the exact interaction that just occurred in the water when we took the sample. This is why sampling can be tedious, but it's an extremely important tool when looking at large natural systems. Through effective sampling, scientists can look at the important parts of a system and make predictions about the bigger picture. On the Noor, the less exciting part of sampling is filtering all that sampled water. Ultimately though, what's incredible is knowing that in this vast ocean, all kinds of complex processes are happening all the time. And whether it's water or data, sampling is intrinsic to doing science because it's the only way to get a picture of the world that is full of invisible processes. When we can see what's going on, it gets us one step closer to understanding how the world works. If you like the tools of science, please subscribe. And if you want to learn about more tools, click next video.